The thing about the Beethoven quartets is that each one never ceases to surprise us. And although it's become commonplace to categorize his output into early, middle, and late quartets, it's problematic and oversimplified. Take, for example, his Opus 95 quartet. Along with the Opus 74 harp quartet, the Opus 95 gets clumped together with the Opus 59s, and together they are considered to represent his middle period. But the fact of the matter is that Opus 95 really also serves as a harbinger to his late quartets. About Opus 95, Beethoven said, the quartet is written for a small circle of connoisseurs and is never to be performed in public. Yet it is the only quartet he gave a nickname to, Serioso. Joseph Kerman aptly describes this work as not a pretty piece, but it is terribly strong and perhaps rather terrible. This is music taut with tension, music whose voltage is turned up so high, the line of ferocity and torture are blurred. <laughs> One moment charged in another completely vulnerable, briefly yearning for comfort, the rage returns to ignite yet another tantrum. quartet is as compact as it gets. It's the shortest of all the quartets and there is no waste. There is no time for transitions and the first movement has only raw juxtapositions of emotions. The frenetic energy of a tortured soul is here desperately trying to escape. Sometimes I feel like Beethoven is acting like a toddler who's developed intellectually but hasn't yet learned to deal with his emotions. The fight inside Beethoven comes to a climax at the end of the movement. Just look at the increasing amounts of sforzandos he demands. 16 bars in fortissimo. <laughs> with its rising half-step is the final desperate call for help before exhaustion seeps in quickly. Shell-shocked and exhausted from this emotional roller coaster is where the slow movement begins. Completely alone, the cello hesitantly finds its footsteps downwards with a slight turn upwards, a sliver of hope. From this, the opening theme appears like the gentle glow from a lantern in the midst of shadows. The heart rate is down, but the residual emotions of trauma are still there. A few bars later, Beethoven writes a two-note exchange, not a melody, not a theme. This type of rhetoric is a mood shifter and appears often in the late quartets. This is a movement of loneliness, a loneliness that has come from maybe losing one's own emotional bearings. Marked allegro assai vivace ma serioso. The wrath of Beethoven returns in the third movement. He takes the dotted rhythm and gives it a jagged edge. It gallops forth with drive and defiance. He alternates between this and trio material that is contrasting but somehow complex. It attempts to find hope, yet it is laden with yearning and pessimism. Somewhat processional, it somehow fails to find true relief. After all of this suffering, it is hard to believe that the introduction of the last movement is the darkest point of Opus 95. The first violin traverses an octave followed by a diminished fourth, a set of intervals that has Beethoven kneeling, perhaps hands together, 
looking upwards and seeking answers from a higher being. the introduction to the last movie of 186 trembles because of its delicacy and inability to fulfill what it wants to express. The bows shake here because the soul succumbs to fear and fragility. Eventually a rising half step in the violins repeats itself and rolls into the main section of the marked Allegretto Agitato. The time signature is 6-8 and it dances forward with echoes of the Tarantella without the perpetual motion. Instead, it wards off evil spirits by dancing amongst the shadows. And like the slow moon of Schubert's death in the Maiden Quartet, it is enticingly gorgeous in its darkness. There are eruptions still, but whereas the eruptions in the first movement stops us in our tracks, here we begin to move with them to form ourselves around them. Now, the way Beethoven ends this piece is simply ingenious. He flips this drama on its head as if he's been toying with our emotions the whole time. The coda is suddenly an opera buffa, comical, light, and fast. Once again, Joseph Kerman puts it aptly. The agitation and pathos and tautness and violence of the quartet seem to fly up and be lost like dust in the sunlight. <laughs> 